Hello, and welcome back to the Conscious Contact Podcast. My name is Janae Peavy, and I'm here with my co-host, Susan Sanders. And today, we're going to talk about our favorite thing in the world, which is books. <laughs> I hope everyone is as excited as we are. Books. And if you're not, sorry, we'll be back next week. Because <laughs> this is for us, and it's our podcast, and we can do what we want. And we love you still, but yeah. Well, I'm going to suggest that you stay <laughs> because if you haven't found books you love, oh, yeah. keep trying. I have two reluctant readers as children. And when I married Paul, he hadn't read a book in ages. Mm, yeah. And now he is finding his niche. He's finding the genre, the delivery method, and yeah. he reads a ton. Like someone Aww. at work was like, oh my gosh, you read so many books. And he talks to people about books. So oh, love there's that. a gateway for everyone. Maybe you'll find something um, that that uh, resonates with you. And then we also have a fun announcement at the end of the episode. So yeah. stick around for that. Mm-hmm. You start, book lady. I don't want to start because eventually it'll be over. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so we're, uh, this episode will come out January 8th. And so what we're talking about are the 2002 quarter four books. Yeah, I banged it when I came back in. Um, So we're talking about 2022 quarter four books and our our reading life for that. So the first thing, anything stand out for you about your quarter four reading Um, in in general? And we're going to, we've got a list. Let me say this while, while you're looking up books on Goodreads. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk about some specific books, but I will link all of those up in the show notes. So you don't have to madly scribble these or drive into oncoming traffic if you're listening while you drive. Um, <laughs> so one of the things that really was exciting about my quarter four reading is related to Goodreads. They do giveaways on the regular for oh, different books. Yeah, I've never won any. I won two books what? in quarter four. I couldn't oh believe it. God. And it's so funny because I hear a lot of people like, does anyone ever win those? Yeah. Like, I enter these all the time. Yeah. But no, I never win. Da, da, da. I won two advanced oh my reader copies. Gosh. So that was pretty exciting. And there's nothing better than going to the mailbox. And there is a book in the mail. Like oh, amongst yeah. all the trash <laughs> that comes in the mail yeah. like we don't even get bills in the mail anymore so nine times out of ten the mail never makes it into the house yeah so it was super fun to to read some books um and then probably i'm sorry if i'm stealing your item but we had the inaugural discussion for the conscious contact book club yeah. in the fourth quarter so those yeah. were a couple of my highlights no we I agree. did um the book Anger by Thich Nhat Hanh and um, had a discussion about it, read, you know, talked to people on social media about it. And um, it was really fun. Yeah. I've never been a part of a book club before. Well, and that is just mind blowing to me. Yeah. Mind blowing. Mind Most blowing. Most people don't believe me. So yeah. Yeah. I, I believe you. I'm just shocked. I know. Um, while I'm thinking, if you'll, uh, adjust your mic just a little bit you just get comfy with it Cor- that way you're me more it, just however you can get it so that you're talking into it more okay. you might have to move your body rather than the mic. Oh, okay just as a heads up yep yeah better there you go check check yeah okay um no i i think the book club was amazing i think it was great to get back um because i kind of got back into a semi rhythm with reading during that period of time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, nothing huge. Like here is what I felt in the last four months of the year <laughs> as far as reading goes, <laughs> but it was nice to like have that come back in, in a natural way and audible fired up again. And yeah, all get that into stuff. a normal reading rhythm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that's one thing where people say, well, how do you find time to read? <laughs> or how, how do you, do you read to do so anything? much yeah. um and I think getting into a normal rhythm of it yeah and then I, you know I I think I've mentioned this before but you know I've got regular time blocked out where I read nonfiction, kind of self-help sort of thing but then I also have audiobooks that I do while we walk and then I do a book on Kindle so if I'm awake in the middle of the night I can read yeah um 
And then I keep a book just like on the coffee table. So if I just get sick of a TV show or I just want to <laughs> have silence mm-hmm. um, or I'm getting ready for bed, but it's too early to actually go to sleep because I'll be up in the middle of the night. You know, I just had kind of a downstairs book. So, you know, fitting reading into crack time, if you know you're going to wait, keep a book in your car. Yeah. There are lots of ways to fit it in. And it sounds like you found some different rhythms to your reading. Yeah. I mean, if I'm doing the dishes, if I'm cooking dinner, you know, I'll plug in an audio book. Yeah. A hundred percent. If I'm waiting on something in the microwave, like there's time pockets everywhere that yeah. we normally probably spend scrolling on our phone mm-hmm. and you could just read a book instead yeah. like it's it it is like a, you can just substitute it instead of creating a whole new habit like notice yeah. when you're doing that and be like wait a second where's that book at? <laughs> right right <laughs> yeah. yeah so what book well let's divide it into two categories so mm-hmm. books that you liked or loved yeah and then we'll talk about anything that we abandoned because I have I, and I don't want to talk shit about books so I'm not going to go into the titles of the books <laughs> that I've abandoned yeah um, I do mark them as abandoned on Goodreads and we'll link to both of our Goodreads, but, um, I just want to talk about maybe some categories or some things I was thinking yeah. about with abandoned books, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I will definitely link to titles of things that we linked and linked and loved that yeah. we liked and loved. So <laughs> anything, um, for you? Yeah. You I was love? trying to look at my Goodreads and kind of scroll up to where this all began. Um, a certain hunger by Chelsea G. Summers. Mm-hmm. Uh, wow, that was interesting. I finished that. It was an audiobook, and I finished it in two days. I had a lot of time mm-hmm. on my hands. Um, and it is like if you're under 18, don't go listen to this book. Um, it is pretty graphic in a oh. lot of ways. Mm-hmm. Um, so sexually and gore wise, it's a horror book. Okay. Um, I don't want to say too much about it because it is just know that there's cannibalism and there's a lot of profanity and there's a lot of sexual <laughs> sexual situations. Um, it's it was really good. I was kind of taken aback by how much and I cuss. It's not like <laughs> you know a ton of profanity, but it is not used in like a overindulgent type of way. Yeah, is intentional to the character. If I come across cannibals, I'm going to use some profanity, right? Sometimes yeah. it's well, situationally no, she, appropriate. She is a cannibal. Um, the one cussing okay. is the yeah, interesting. Mm-hmm. And it is it is not like a normal cannibal book. It, it it's very very interesting. Point of order. What's a normal cannibal book? <laughs> a cookbook? My, uh, oh, uh, yeah. No, my thought process for it would be exactly what you were thinking. Like, it's a person writing about a cannibal. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But this is from her perspective. And it's a her, first off. That doesn't happen right. super often in the books that I'm reading. Science says most cannibals are males. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so it is it is intriguing. So serial hmm. killer, obviously you have to be a serial killer if you're a cannibal and you live in america like you know unless you're just a huh. one-off cannibal because okay. you're gonna have to kill that person to right. eat them most of the time she's not eating road roadkill of people that are dying or unless anything it's that <laughs> book about the plane crash in the andes oh where they had to yeah eat some of the players. yeah Ooh. so <laughs> any friends or, or or family that are listening um if i die and we're stuck in the andes it's totes my goats okay to eat me <laughs> yeah ditto <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Because I want to be, like, sprinkled in the garden anyway. So yeah. I always want to come back as food. That's my <laughs> goal. Well, food. you'd love this book then. Because she's a, a so food funny. reviewer. and that's... I really am going to have to listen to this, aren't I? And the language she uses to describe food in general. But uh-huh. then also the pairings that she's going into with this is... It is very... Okay. It was very intriguing. And it was it was a good good read. Well, Let's go back and forth. You do one. Yeah, we are totally are going to yeah. alternate back and forth because um, the first one on my list is called The Bullet That Missed. And it's part of the Thursday Murder Club, oh, which is... I've only read the first one, but I it, if you haven't read that, go, please, Lord. It's great. So the only <laughs> book that I can really follow cannibals swearing is with thursday murder club yeah. because it is senior citizens <laughs> yes. solving murders it's from so a nursing good. home they're so sweet i want to cry oh my god <laughs> and when it comes time for me to find a nursing home the mm-hmm. first question i'm going to ask is 
Do y'all have a murder club? Yeah. There have been any murders around town recently that you guys have investigated? No, I'm not interested if there's murders. I'm interested if the nursing home has the club. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Because I want some 70 and 80 year olds to solve murders with. Hell yeah. These are the sweetest books. They are. And I uh, did both of these on non-audio so i don't know if the audio is good i can't vouch for that i I read the original on audiobook and it was great okay yeah do they alternate author or uh narrators i'm trying to remember it's accents i think for sure i can't remember if it was different narrators but yeah um now this is the third one oh my so gosh. i did the first and i did the third and just by the way my holds came in i didn't want to wait until oh. the second one came <laughs> gotcha, so it's gotcha. out of order i think it would have been a greater experience if i did it in order mm. but i really enjoyed it that's on my to read list for sure yep the bullet that missed yeah Ooh. Yep. Ooh, i love that what's number two for you oh gosh if i had to pick number two um I've got some, okay, so this is like a, not a disclaimer or a trigger warning or anything. I don't even know how to put that, but like. Dude, this you is went a... to the cannibals with no trigger warning and now you're coming <laughs> in with a disclaimer? <laughs> what on earth is this going to be? I know, right? Um, Just, this is a thoughtful place to pause and open your mind and be tolerant of people that might disagree with you or that might read things that you would never read. I think that that's kind of like a good broad. You need broad. to just rip it off. What is the title? Oh, well, you're. Rip I, off the band yeah, This is to you, too. So, okay. like, take a deep breath. Okay. Um. <laughs> oh, this is going to be the Laura. Schlesinger? Schlesinger. Yeah. Yep. So, Schles- Schlesinger. S-I-N-G-E-R. Yeah. Okay. And the title is rough. Uh, the Proper Care and Feeding of Husbands. Yep. So, I am not married yet. However, I've been with my partner for 10 years and her language is very harsh. Um, I'm just going to say that that is my criticism of the book. And I think everyone that liked the book still had that criticism. It is very harsh. She does not come from a loving place sometimes. Mm, mm -hmm. Um, And without getting into the weeds of what this book is too much, it is talking about basically how and it kind of reminds me of AA a little bit. Your shifting of your own viewpoint changes your life. Mm-hmm. And it affects those around you. Mm-hmm. So if you take it upon yourself to change how you are, how you act and react, you don't have to worry about controlling other people. Because most of the time, one, you're going to care less. Mm. And two, instinctively, as you better yourself, as you do those things for you it infects people around you in a in a wonderful way and allows them to treat you differently because you are becoming a different person so inherent That's in, in this that book? yeah interesting i know i know and and i can completely understand why people would be immediately turned off when they read like yeah. the synopsis and they're like, what the fuck? Why would you read that book? Well, and also just some of the things that she has said in general in yes. the past. Yes. Agreed. Um, but sometimes you have to focus on the message, not the messenger. A hundred percent. That's what I want to leave people with if they're like, I don't want to read this book. Or if you're on the fence, I guess is a better way to put it. Mm-hmm. I love to read everything and almost especially things that I disagree with. I've read a lot of books that I just inherently do not believe the same as the author and I Mm -hmm. don't I'm not going to but I like to be challenged in that way and I like to hear what's underneath that like the the driving motivation behind the Mm -hmm. reason they believe the way they believe the delivery can be off a lot of times for a lot of people especially when you're passionate about something we can forget to be kind or to present it in a way that is going to be and not that Everyone needs to do that, but for it to be more easily digestible Mm -hmm. to a larger group of people. Right. But as someone who cares, and I hope everyone does, who cares very deeply about the person I'm spending the rest of my life with, making myself 
not so much of a bitch and a nag (laughs) is important for me. Yeah. Um, And some people, you might not be that type of person. I am. And I know that. And that's my knee jerk reaction to most situations. And that makes me sick sometimes. And I don't want to be that human. Mm -hmm. Um, And he's a carefree, happy go lucky dude. He doesn't notice it 97% of the time. Mm -hmm. But sometimes he's like, wow, that came out sideways. Right. Like, are you all right? You're in a mood. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it's, it is helpful for me because it sheds light on a lot of stuff that I can do behind the scenes to be a better one, to be a better human, to be a better partner. Mm-hmm. And this is not like a, I don't use, I didn't use this book as a how to, mm-hmm. it is a opening my mind to like, if, if you are having issues with someone's reaction to you, you're the problem. Just broadly. And this is excluding abuse and those type of extreme situations. Of course. But if you are having continual arguments with someone about something or if you are constantly running into this thing, Mm -hmm. whether or not they are a participant does not matter. You are the problem. You can be the solution. Right. You can be the alleviator for that situation. But it does take an extreme amount of effort on your part. Yeah. To change that in yourself. So it's. It is a touchy book. Yeah. And that's the proper care and feeding of husbands. Yes. Okay. And it was written a while ago. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) And she's written lots of other stuff that I was not, I didn't jam, jam, jive with, jive with Mm -hmm. as much. Um, But the message behind that in people, I think a lot of their criticism was her language and the, and the fact they felt that it was very um, anti-feminist. Mm-hmm. And I feel the, I agree with the language part, but I feel the very much the opposite of her being an anti-feminist and Mm -hmm. speaking about subservience to husbands, because that's not what she's talking about in here at all. Right. It is actually, to me, it is actually very Mm pro-women being the head of the household. And she goes into the fact that we are. (laughs) Secret. If there's Mm -hmm. any men listening, shut it off now. (laughs) Because of our innate ability to have emotions and to be emotional, Mm -hmm. the more we cultivate either our control over that or the way that we express that, men, and I'm not simplifying men, but men are simpler than women when it comes to that process outwardly. And the more that you are able to see your own part in it, and recognize what you are bringing into that situation, whether it is baggage or an attitude or someone pissed you off at the grocery store and now you're coming into the house with that. The more that you're aware of that, the more that you are able to not smooth things over, but to live a less clashing life. Mm. Like the more, again, and this is just like a broader topic, the more control you have over yourself and your actions and reactions, not necessarily your first thought, because I don't, that is a knee jerk for well, your me. responses rather your than response. your reactions. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. The second one on my list is Mad Honey by Jodi Pico. Yeah. And she is one of my favorite all time authors. And what really stood out for me for this book, she, it's a new release for hers this fall. And the previous two books that are uh, slipping my mind right now, um, I had pre-ordered of hers and they came as hardbacks, which is no, that's like a huge investment for me to pre-order a hardback. Yeah. I rarely even buy books. Yeah. And I abandoned both. And I was so disappointed. My favorite author, I spent money, I Uh pre-ordered and I abandoned them. And when this one came out, I was like, girl, do not let this be a third strike. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't. It was really good. <laughs> and it was classic Jody Pico with a twist in it and a twist I didn't see coming, but I should have if I was paying attention. So it was one of those that I think well, maybe I'll go reread it, which Ooh. I also rarely reread. So um I definitely endor- endorse it. And that's Mad Honey by Jody Pico. I've never read anything by her. So I'm. She's great. That's interesting. Yeah. I keep getting recommended to read her. And then I just never. My, the to read list issue. Yes. Like, oh, I'd rather read about cannibals or <laughs> <laughs> about making my life better. <laughs> yeah. She's got a very extensive backlist. So it's also great to go. Like, if you're looking for something that is available at the library now, yeah. um, she's a good Should author because it's. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta add that. Add that to my list. 
Yeah. What's number three for you? I'll take a break and do something chill. Um, well, I've, I've only got two more. So <laughs> okay. if you're swinging for the fences, let her rip. Oh, I've only got two more. So okay. um, All Good People Here mm-hmm. by Ashley Flowers. And she is one half of the Crime Junkie podcast. Um, and I was initially like kind of worried if someone's not an author and then they come out with a book. Mm-hmm. It it someone's first book is very like a I'm taking a risk on this type of vibe. Sure. And she obviously has a true crime podcast. The book is about not a true crime, but is a fiction book about crime. And you love crime junkies. Yes. I yeah. love that. Um, the co-host to that, not Ashley, but I, and her name is slipping my mind. I'm so sorry, but her co-host is one of us. And it is, and she's not out, just a podcaster, she's but <laughs> out as a person in recovery. One hundred percent. No, she. They made a whole episode about it, which is huge because mm-hmm. I think they are the second most popular true crime podcast. Period. Number one was my favorite murder. Mm-hmm. If I'm if I'm remembering that correctly, it's either crime junkie or my favorite murder. But that's okay. Yeah. Yes. Back to the book though. I got yeah. us off topic. All yes. good people here. Yes, yes, yes. All good people here. Um, about a small town where crime happens. You know, classic setup. It's told from multiple different viewpoints, mm-hmm. um, back and forth in time from when the crime happened to present day. It was very good. I quite enjoyed it. And it was different accents and different narrators. There's three different female narrators. Mm. Ashley Flowers is one of them, but she's only at the very end, which I think is commendable for her. Interesting. Yeah. Being a podcaster, not narrating it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It it was lovely. It was an easy read and it was very twisty. And every time I thought I knew who it was. I would go back and forth in my brain because they did a mm-hmm. f- misdirection is wonderful in this. And yeah. I quite uh, applaud that. I love, a, a, what is it called? A unreliable narrator. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's great. It yep. was great. Um, well, this is in my TBR stack too. So I'm going to have to reshuffle it and bring that to the top. Yes. If I had the physical version, I'd toss it at you right now. Yeah. <laughs> but I I did listen to it because the the three different narrators definitely piqued my interest. Yeah. yeah, it was it was really good. It was a fun Fun, easy book. Yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, mm, I was going to say this is a fun, easy book, but so the book is called Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson, and this is a recent five-star read. So those of you that subscribe to the Sustainable Sue Book Club, or excuse me, Bookmobile, you've already heard about this. So the Bookmobile is where I send um, reviews of my five-star books. Yeah. And, and I'll put a link to that in the show notes. I but, get those emails, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know all about this one. But it is easy breezy in terms of, like, it starts out fun and the people in it are fun and it's quirky and silly. But the message behind it. Mm is what really brought it around to me. Like I almost started tearing up as I was listening to the audiobook. Like, Ooh. What in the world? And it just um being the stepmother in a blended family, especially the way I was trying to find my path into being a parent, mm. is what I think really touched my heart in this. So I just love, you know, a quirky book that also has emotion, but not in like a a cheesy, you know, way. Um, yeah, it had a predictable ending, which usually makes me want to throw books. Yeah, but I still like I loved it enough that the predictable ending still made me give it five stars. Ooh. So big deal. Um, yeah, the gist of it is the children catch on fire. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> so, and not in a way like the children die because they caught on fire, but they just spontaneously combust, like fire starter type of vibes. But they're but, but they, they are, are the, the ones on yeah. fire, yeah. yeah. Ooh. So that kind of reminds me of. Um, it seems like that would have been written by Chuck Flan Flanick. What is his last name? The Fight Club and Lullaby. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, it seems like an idea that he would have thrown onto a page. I love that kind of stuff. That's kind of really left of center and yeah. wildly. Uh, fantastical but not sci-fi yes that is the way to describe it because i was like is am i eh." am i on board with this (laughs) and it came out several years ago and that's why i didn't pick it up ah yeah yeah because people who had who i really 
follow them closely in their tastes in books hated this. Ooh. Yeah. And it's not a spoiler about the, I mean, it's like the first couple chapters, kids catch, kids catch on fire. <laughs> That's chaos how it's and set ensues. up. Yeah. 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 Um, so that is nothing to see here by Kevin Wilson. Have you read any of Chuck? I can't say his last name. N- not that I know of. Um, I wrote it down to look it up. Yeah. I've seen the movie Fight Club. Yeah. That was my least favorite, least imaginative okay. of any of his stuff. His stuff is off the wall. Like right. think Stephen King, but for like combustible children. Okay. It I would rec Lullaby, I think, is probably my favorite one. Okay. That was really good. Um, and Choke, which is also a movie, but not as well done so i would read the book instead yeah excellent this is also a good discussion for us to have because we're recording it before christmas and paul and i are going up to um visit my dad so we have 24 hours in the car yeah oh girl yeah yeah and we both (laughs) listen to books on like 2.2 speed yeah so we can get through several books on the way up and back oh that's gonna be awesome we need a debrief after that too yeah yeah for sure (laughs) Um, all right. What's your last book you want to toss out? My last one is, again, just listen to the message. You know, <laughs> I know. I know. Disclaimers I know. Book. It doesn't happen often, but I was just on a kick, man. You know, I was a little hesitant to bring up Kids Catching on Fire, but we've done Cannibals. Yeah. And proper Care and Feeding of Husbands. Yeah. Bring it. What's your fourth yeah, one? Yeah, right? Um, this is Let Me Be a Woman by Elizabeth Elliot. And... Again, this is a, this is self-help to me. And so it's nonfiction. It's nonfiction. Mm-hmm. And she talks about how being a woman is different than being a man. Hence, like, the title. Mm-hmm. And she is Christian, so she talks about it from that viewpoint. So I disconnect a little bit with it there. So it's very, it is very biblical in the way that she's speaking of it. But the, again, the undercurrent message is... A lot of, and again, it's kind of like the last one. A lot of people feel like this is anti feminist, but to me, it is propping up women and showing them how special they are because they are a woman Mm. and how that gives you particular things that you are, you can, women can do whatever they want. However, you are particularly more gifted in certain areas Mm -hmm. and using that to your advantage in your life. Yeah. And and there are some books in the business world that talk about like women need to act more like men in order to get ahead. And that makes me crazy. Same. Same. We are on the same page with that. I want to use my strengths. A hundred percent. And that is a lot of what this book book Mm -hmm. talks about. And yeah, that is that is the big thing here for me is instead of trying to overcome a patriarchy by being more like the men. Mm-hmm. If we lean more into our femininity, and and I'm not talking about like wearing a dress and putting on makeup. That is the, not the core of femininity, right? Like, but lest like, anyone be confused, the strength of collaboration and yes, being a woman collaborative. Yes, I just use the same word twice, but go ahead. No, I know 100 percent what you mean. Your inherent nature as a woman, mm-hmm. using that as your advantage because it is because men don't have that particular skill set as much as women do right why not bring that to the table and use that because it can be a force for good you don't have to ignore right you being a woman i think that's so detrimental right so yeah that's a lot of of what this talks about and it just it it put a reframing in my mind that i it's already been there and stewing and like all of that but Mm -hmm. that permission to be a woman And to not have to show up and be a man to win or to be accepted or to whatever. I can be a woman and that is inherently in my nature. First off, it's going to be easier than trying Mm -hmm. to fight against it and be a man. Yes. It's going to be better for my emotions because I'm not hiding and shoving and bottling and pushing everything away. And it's going to come across more authentic, which is going to attract more people. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that, it, oh, that was that. really good. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, my last book is called The Measure. And the gist of The Measure is um, everyone at the same time in the whole entire world. So a little suspension of belief, sci-fi flavor. Yeah. Everybody in the whole world gets a box with a string in it. And chaos ensues because it turns out the length of the string is the length of your life. Oh. 
And at first I was like, oh, well, I would want to know. And then it follows along like all these people that agree. And then I was, as I'm reading these, I'm like, oh, well, never mind. I definitely don't want to know. I wouldn't even open the box. (laughs) But then you read about all these people that didn't want to know and or didn't open the box. And their, their stories are interwoven and it's parallel timelines and timelines that start to intersect not timelines but a life people yes. that intersect storylines yeah. that intersect that's and right up my alley yeah i i want you to read it and then i want to have a conversation of would you want to know or not i think that would be a great podcast episode i i think so too yeah but I think I need to write out all my reasons why. <laughs> I'm going to really have to prepare for this. And, pro- and I think I will end up rereading this one, too. That's really cool. Um, it reminds me of um, how intrigued I was by The Gift. Yes. <laughs> Would you do it? <laughs> yeah. I. Um, anyway, I, I, I really enjoyed that book. And I also enjoy books that just generally I'm thinking about later. And I'm clearly yeah. still thinking about this. Yeah. Like when I go pick up an Amazon package, is there going to be a box with a string in it? Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> I hope not. No shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so those are the books that we liked and we loved in quarter four. And those will be linked in the show notes. And we want to transition to books we abandon or things that didn't work for our reading life. And like I said at the top, I'm not going to give names and authors of books I didn't finish. Okay. You certainly can. But <laughs> no, as, a, right. as a budding author, I would feel terrible if someone talked shit about my book on yeah. a podcast. Well, I mean, that is whatever. your, it's your own personal, it didn't hit with you. It doesn't mean that it's not going to hit with a shit ton of other people. That is yeah. exactly the vibe I get as I'm looking at, you know, some of the notes that I have here about books that I DNF'd, did not finish. Yeah. Because they're not bad books. They're just not for me. Yeah. And they might be just not for you right now or they might be you know right. all of that stuff yeah. yeah this year um and I don't remember it was quarter four one of them for sure was his poetry I keep going back to poetry and trying different poets and different like styles of poetry mm-hmm. it's just not my jam I haven't gotten there yet yeah me either and I may not I may quit trying I think I'm done I've been done since AP English in high school like I just it doesn't do it for me. I don't get the vapors. I don't feel anything yeah, from that. Yeah, I don't feel swoony. No. I feel more swoony from some nonfiction than I do about poetry. Yeah, I feel swoony <laughs> about, like, the most random stuff. Thursday Murder Club. I mean, right. like, I yeah. would rather I would rather listen to that author in the way that they write um, yep. than poetry. Yeah. Yeah. I... And this is not a hard and fast rule, but it's something that I'm noticing. I don't think I want to listen to memoirs read by the author anymore on audiobook. (gasps) Really? Yeah. This is one of my favorite things ever. And again, it's it's not 100%. Like there's some that I've enjoyed, but I think I need to read it instead of listen to it on audiobook. Uh And I am going to mention one specifically just because I would love, I want to read this book. Okay. But I'm just not jamming with listening to the author read it. Okay. I want you to say who this is. Yeah. And we're going to do one, two, three, say it. Say the author's name. Okay. <laughs> I had to check. Because, my brain was farting. Because I wonder if the only reason I got through this book is because, because he narrated it. Maybe. Okay. okay so we're going to go one, two, three, and then say the author's name. Yeah. Ready? One, two, three. Matthew Dave McConaughey. No. Okay. <laughs> Matthew McConaughey. <gasps> That it, he's another one. Yeah. I would listen to Matthew McConaughey read the phone book. My other issue Green is. Green lights. I was like, what the fuck is he talking about? I know. He has rambled about some shit for he about 20 ramb- minutes. And that might be the other thing. I love him. His and he is, is a great. hippy dippy. Mm-hmm. He is a rambler. And that's cool. I just no, don't. No, it's not. I don't have the time for that right now to listen to. You know what his book, and we're talking about Green Lights, right? Yeah. Green Lights is the only acceptable, Green Lights is my acceptable version of ASMR. <laughs> I can't stand ASMR, but his 
his yeah. Texas accent is very soothing to me. Yes. Yeah. So sometimes I would just like intake the syllables. And this is the I'm other issue. Listening. I'm just taking in the syllables. I'm listening to it on a higher speed. No, I took yeah. it all the way back to 1.0. This is my mm-hmm. other problem. And I haven't tried that yet because, again, I started realizing what this book was going to be. And I was like, I don't have time because he's a slow talker also. Yeah. Yes. And I'm like, I, I love this. I love the idea of this. Yep. However, right now and in this format, I can't. <laughs> yes. Once the the holiday music gets put away, bring yes. this out as yes. a, as an album rather than a book. Yes. I, that is where my brain went with mm-hmm. it. Sorry if you can hear my cat screaming. I can hear her starting right now. She's fine. She just, I, I don't know what she, she's scared. Everyone has disappeared from the earth and she's never going to eat again. Yeah. Well, I thought she was calling to me. <laughs> she probably is too. Soon. She's like, you're in there. I know you can pet me. I can smell you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so interesting. Yeah. Um. I know. Oh my gosh. I hope people can hear your cat. Uh, poor your baby. Name, Lona. Lona. Yeah. Because she hates being Alona. Hence. Yeah. That's it's also a name of a scientist from Star Wars, but oh, okay. we won't get into that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the second DNF I had, and I think I'm going to just accept that I am old enough to not in- connect with books that have drama from my twenties. <sighs> yes. Because I, there, there's one book from this particular, the author is Colleen Hoover and I'm going to say it because one of her, you need to zoom in on your eye roll. If you, if you're not watching this, you should. Because we're not going to narrate. I, <laughs> my think, I think you might have been able to pick up on the eye roll and audio. It was oh, that visceral. Oh, lordy. But the, the book Verity by Colleen Hoover was a five-star amazing. I, I made my husband listen to it. Yeah. We, we sat in the car at Thanksgiving before going in so he could fininish it. Yeah. It reminded me of Rebecca a lot I, if you've read Rebecca. I abandoned Rebecca. Uh, Verity is one of my favorite books, top ten favorite books ever. And I cannot read other Colleen Hoover books, but I realized mm-hmm. it's because I am so glad not to be in my 20s anymore. Yes. Yeah. And if you're in your 20s, hang in there, y'all. It is going to be okay. Yeah. It'll be fine. Just find a soft place to, yeah. to live out your 20s. <laughs> Don't post everything on social media. <laughs> right. And the thing is, is that those books are just not for me. Yeah. Yeah. I think I really would have loved him when I was in my 20s. Oh, yeah, I would have, too. I yeah. just need to let go and move on. Me, too. Not And stop trying to get them to be Verity because they're not. They're not. And I realized that I was lucky I realized that very quickly. And I had a lot of people that I talked to about it, too. And they were like, uh, I agree. OK. Yeah. They gave me that soft landing of like, you're not crazy. You're right. not not trying hard enough or something. Like, right. Yeah. And now that I have the Thursday Murder Club, oh, I will read yeah. that instead of the books about the people in their 20s. Yes. Agreed. Ditto, ditto. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you um, can't stomach Rebecca the book, there are two movie versions. Oh. And they're lovely. There's one on Netflix. It's pretty Dang. recent. I think it came out in 2020 or 2019. I looked at that and I was like, well, I didn't like the book. Do I want to spend the time? If you like Verity, I think that you would enjoy it. I mean, even okay. if it's on in the background, if you're crafting or something. Right. I mean, it is. And it's kind of, I mean, Rebecca is. I can't remember if it is Agatha Christie or if it's just Agatha Christie-esque. Uh-huh. Um, it's lovely. It, it reminds me a lot of Verity. All right. So we're going to make this super meta. And while I'm doing the show notes for this episode, I'm going to watch Rebecca on Netflix. Ooh. And so I can put my response in the I like it. in the um, Instagram post for this episode. Yes. I will yes. put. So come find us on Instagram and, and see what I thought of Rebecca. Yes. On Netflix. I love that. Um, I also, back to the peer pressure thing. I am going to let go of the fact that just because someone else loved it, Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, just because everybody else loved it, I don't have to. (laughs) Yeah. There were, I'm trying to see if I wrote down the number. Um, I have a lot of those. I I don't know how many it was, but I think it was probably four or five books just in the fourth quarter Mm. that are on the year end books of people loved that I either had three stars or I abandoned. Yeah. Which means yeah. meh on my 
my list. If it was abandoned, yeah. I was ready to throw it. Yeah. But if it was three stars, it was very meh to me. Yeah. And there's one that I believe it's the Goodreads pick of book of the year. Oh my gosh. Right. What which one is, is voted. Which is voted. I do want to know what that one is, just in case I've read uh, it. Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. No, by, I think it's Gabrielle Zevin. I really enjoyed it until a certain part of it. And then I was like, come on, man. Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of those like that, too, that a lot of people really loved. And I'm like, wait a second. Right. And then I keep waiting for it to, like, go back to being good. And then I'm like, oh, darn. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a bummer. Broad genre for me um, is stereotypical self-help, self-improvement. I'm done. Yes. I it doesn't do anything for me. Um mm-hmm. and we were kind of talking before the podcast like I would rather read a memoir of someone who struggled like with drugs and alcohol mm-hmm. rather than Quitlet. Cuz What is Quitlet? So books about people that talk about how they stopped drinking that is not based in any kind of program. Oh, I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. Dude, that's some bullshit. I, for, oh, and again, I love y'all. And if that worked for you, awesome. I know. I'm judging McJudgerson over I'm here. I'm a but... real alcoholic, so it didn't work for me. Yeah. I've been there, done that, and I've tried all of the things that they talk about and how easy it was for them to do. Uh-huh. And they can call themselves whatever they want. But for me, as an a real true blue five-star alcoholic (laughs) that didn't work for me it was never going to um so Mm. it just doesn't do anything for me yeah and i and again it's the message and i love the message and a lot of that gives people permission to stop drinking you know and shows them a path and maybe they're just hard drinkers or binge or whatever Mm -hmm. whatever Mm -hmm. but for me it's not for me and like things like atomic habits things like the five, four, three, two, one blast off lady, <laughs> things like solve for happy. I think those are all wonderful books. Mm-hmm. I think that they're glorious. The message is there. I am lucky. I am blessed beyond blessed, not to sound, you know, too cheesy to be an alcoholic and have a program that does all of that for me already. Mm-hmm. I have mm-hmm. a basis and a book to go to that gives me all of the things that are in the message of all of these books. Right. Um, so it sounds yeah. like it's more you you want to try to avoid the the cotton candy version of recovery and self help. A hundred percent, yeah. And they're yep. and again they're lovely, and I love the idea of them. And then at the same time, I'm like, I have a more hardcore version of this over here that I know works for me. Mm-hmm. This is not adding to my knowledge of that. Mm-hmm. And then I just stop reading them. Right. And again, they're lo- I don't know, they're well written and they're lovely, and I recommend right. them to people who aren't one of us. Yep. Because I think that people need something. And mm-hmm. if you're not one of us, you don't get to have this particular program, you know? Yeah. If a lot of people need it, but they might not have the same issue as us. Yeah. So these are lovely help meets to those those type of people. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yep. Um, I had four of these, but I combined two of them into a previous one. I'm talking about the backlist from a favorite author. So back uh, to the idea of what we talked about with Jodi Pico. Yeah. You know, she can be my favorite author and mm-hmm. I don't have to love her backlist. Yes. I'm just going to like, yeah. oh, it doesn't mean she's not one of my favorite authors anymore. Yeah. I you... just don't love those. And same yeah. thing with Frederick Bachman. There were a couple that I was like, dude, is this your new way of writing? I don't love this. <laughs> yeah. But then he came back with another one in the quarter four. You know, we, if, if these, it, it's hard to write a book. And so they're not all going Ugh. to be yeah monsters yeah. or connect with me or yeah. maybe people that read the books that connected with me didn't land for them mm-hmm. and vice versa. So yeah. that is what I want to get across that there's something out there for everyone. A hundred percent. If you haven't found the book that lands with you, keep trying, which is why yeah. we link to all these books yeah clearly we have quite a variety a hundred percent yeah um so check check out those books yes agreed Pun intended yeah. go to your library <laughs> please go to your library yeah. and you can check them out online and you can check out audiobooks online from your library at yeah. the in the libby app um so it's accessible yes. to everyone all you need is a photo id so yep. yeah to get your library card. To get right? your library card, mm-hmm. then you put that number in in Libby. Yep. yep. Very good. 
any other thoughts about books you loved or liked or things you abandoned? Um, Because then I've got one more question for you about um, reading. The only thing that I wanted to touch on um, is what are you currently reading and are you about to abandon it or do you feel like you're going to finish it? Good question. Um, Because I've got my in process. Yeah, and I'm looking these up on Goodreads because... I I generally have four books going at once, like we've talked about. Uh huh. So on my Kindle, I have a book by Mary Morantz called "Slow Growth Equals Strong Roots." True that. Yep, which goes right along with what I teach about small, sustainable changes. Mm-hmm. And then I am listening to "Drinking: A Love Story" by Caroline Knapp, and her recovery story. I'm only a quite a quarter in, but it is a lot like mine. Oh. Um, Ooh. I didn't have a lot of external consequences Mm -hmm. uh my marriage stayed intact i had a great job i didn't cause my husband to lose custody of the kids i didn't have a dui so when i quit drinking people couldn't figure out why like well no really what happened there has to be something that happened like emotional bankruptcy (laughs) right Um, I didn't want to live anymore. I don't know. <laughs> well, well, not even that. Like, I wasn't suicidal. Mm. So it just, things really, really, really sucked. But yeah. why isn't that enough? Right? Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> so I, I'm really enjoying reading or listening to her book. Um, the next is a nonfiction book called Home, uh, Home by Another Way, Notes from the Caribbean. And this is along the same lines of the last episode we recorded about rest because he talks Mm. about like island time and having to wait for an hour for the chef to come to work so they could have the dinner that they ordered. Why people lust after vacation so much when you could cultivate that in your day-to-day life. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And then um, my downstairs book that I read before going to bed to read my Kindle book is <laughs> Naked by David Sedaris. And I just oh, love a book of love essays him. Yeah. Um, because it's something easy to pick up. It's not like yeah. pick up and put down, you know, if I'm halfway through one of the essays and yeah. time for bed, you know, I, I He's can great. bust off. Love him. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to abandon any of them. I think nice. I'm going to get to the end of all of them. Nice. Yeah. What about you? What do you have currently going? I'm in the middle. I'm trying to decide if I'm abandoning it abandoning it or not. I'll think I am, and then I'll listen to a little more, and then it'll pull mm. me back in a little bit. Um, White Horse by Erica Wirth. Mm, um, it is about a Native American woman who receives a bracelet that was her mother's, and it starts making her have visions and seeing her mother and her mother disappeared under mysterious circumstances and they've assumed she's dead and maybe she Uh isn't um so it's got a lot of really cool native american language Mm. culture um like talismans and it it is really intriguing from that aspect Mm -hmm. and she could probably be one of us so there's that (laughs) element as well and she's a hot fucking mess um and you you get this hint that there's something nefarious that might have happened with her friend um that she talks about like in the past there's a little bit of flashback it's very interesting yeah but at the same time sometimes i'm just bored of like Mm. this is a lot of exposition on something that isn't very interesting and it kind of is like something crazy is happening with the bracelet thing and the vision thing and then we jump over here to um like regular time and she's talking about it to someone and then somehow time jumps but we don't reference to that oh. and it's like the next day kind of but uh-huh. we don't she doesn't talk about it it's just and then right. i'm drinking here and trying to pick up this guy and then we move on to another vision and the yeah it's disorienting and not in like a purposeful right uh way Mm -hmm. but i like it so i don't know (laughs) know. yeah this is disorientation can be a good plot yes tool yes but when it's not it's Mm -hmm. disorienting yeah yeah god i'm funny on this one (laughs) you are (laughs) um all right so let's look to the future quarter one of 23 what are you looking forward to in your reading life and there's one correct answer would you like to tell me what it is (laughs) (laughs) the book club (laughs) (laughs) that is what we're both looking forward to in q1 tell us about that 
so without giving their book away this is just a teaser everybody i'm not gonna lie i don't even know what book we picked good good <laughs> don't remember. yay it'll be a surprise for everyone it's today. gonna be a shock to me when it like legitimately i don't remember and everyone it was janae's idea i i'm sure it was i'm <laughs> sure a great it idea, was though. oh my god you'll have to tell me after we're done recording okay. so we have a book club and we had a discussion um, in October about our previous book, which is Anger by Thich Nhat Hanh. I think we picked a fiction instead of a nonfiction. Correct. So if you were not a nonfiction fan, jump on board with this one. It's going to be amazing because I picked it. <laughs> For sure. Oh, my God. For sure. But, yeah, we have a hashtag. I'm pretty sure it is hashtag CC book club. <laughs> Or is hashtag Conscious Contact Book Club. Damn it, I can't remember. Or CC Podcast Book Club. Uh. Something. We'll put it in the show notes. And if you follow us on Instagram, it'll be all over this episode tag. Um, Yeah. So you can use that so you can share on your stories or a post. If you're reading along with us, we'd love to see that. Um, We'd love to reshare that with your permission. Mm -hmm. Because this, this is part of making this more of a conversation. It already is, even if we're not, you know, speaking directly with you. But we want to be able to have this kind of light discussion while we're reading. And then we'll have like a big Zoom call and I'll talk about and break down this book mm-hmm. and our thoughts. And it was awesome when we did it with anger. And that's really heavy. Yeah. And I think it's going to be like really high energy for a fiction book. Yeah. yeah. Good. Now, if you want to be the one of the first people to hear about it, go to ConsciousContactPodcast.com. And sign up for the book club. You'll yes. you'll see a link there. Um, those are the people that are going to hear first. Well, besides Janae, once we stop recording today. <laughs> the, the people that are signed up for the book club are going to hear first what the pick is. Yeah. So head over and sign up and you'll get that sent to your email probably sometime in January. And you'll get the date for the discussion. You can put that on your calendar and that will be over Zoom. But we'd love to have you in the discussion. And even if you are um, a reluctant reader and you just want to hear how book discussions go and hang out with other readers and hope it will rub off on you, we'd love to have um, people, if you intend to read the book and don't get a chance to, we'd love to have you along as well. Yes. Or if you read it and don't finish it, that's fine too. Exactly. Like we, we just want to have a big group of people who have reading as an intention, period. Yes. yes. Cultivating that. And I mean, we can just hang out too. Like we're going to talk about the book and then we can just bullshit if we want to, you know. Or talk about what we're reading besides the book that we yes. just read. Or you can yeah. help us pick the next one. So if you're like, I've hated both of your choices, come to the book club so you oh, can actually. Oh, I really actually... want to talk to those people. Yes. Yeah. Like if you're like, I didn't connect with either one of these. I didn't want to read them. Come, mm-hmm. please, and tell us what you want to read. Fantastic. Well, I'm going to, uh, anything else about reading before I swing us into our joy for the no. week? Because of course I'm connecting it t- to books. Um, I have been invited and I accepted a, an invitation to join a local writers group. Yeah. And um, these are all folks that have writing aspirations. Some are books and some are not. There's a, a singer songwriter in Ooh. the group and the vibe of, everyone's different projects coming together is, is really cool. And part of that, we have committed to each other to um, a daily journaling practice. Yeah. Now, daily is can loose, right? We do the best we can. Yeah. But it's interesting how the energy of the group, the daily journaling, and this isn't necessarily about journaling what I want to write about. This is mm. general journaling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. It has really shaken loose some things that are filling some major holes in the book proposal that I'm working on. Ooh. So it's it's really neat how being around like-minded people, like you're saying, you know, the just being with other book intentioned people yeah. is fueling that, you know, being around other writing intentioned intentioned people is fueling my writing and it's it's the purpose, right? That's why yeah. we're doing the group. Yeah. But it's neat to see it come to fruition for me. And then when we, you know, meet each week hearing how that's going for other people. So. Oh, that's awesome. Super cool. That's so exciting. I run a time mind to books too. Um, Cause I've, that is a lot of presence for different people. 
I felt very lucky this year that I was able to uh, gift a lot of books to mm-hmm. people. Um, my sister and my um, I don't know how she would be related to me. Luke's niece. <laughs> yeah. That's, oh, that isn't your niece. Anyway. No. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I've got some some books and whether they like them or not, it doesn't matter. Because, uh, again, it's about the intention. And if they don't like them, I'll take them back and read them myself. That's fine. Um, but or they can give them to a free little library yes. and someone else can love them. Yes. And the ones to my, my sister, I am excited because – they're ones that I like. We kind of talked about like, let's just give each other the books that we liked. Oh, that's yeah. cool. So I picked some that are kind of coinciding with her, what she likes, which we're definitely related because uh, it's very similar. Um, so I, I can't wait to to hear her thoughts. And she just turned 18 the other day and I'm like, oh my God. Oh, that's cool. Um, so it's, it, that is cool. Sharing that you know, with people mm-hmm. and knowing that other people read and I can buy books for them because it, it just doesn't happen very often, Susan. Yes. <laughs> and that's just really cool. It's fun. Love it. Yeah. yeah. I gifted some books this year too. Oh, you're, you're right. Your joy is my joy too. Yes. And I got a book from Susan and I'm very excited to read it. Good. <laughs> Let me know when you do. We'll, we'll talk about that one too. Yes. Um, all right. Well, let us know about your thoughts for your quarter four reading or just any thoughts in general. In the post for this this episode, you can find me. This is Susan speaking. I'm at Susan under sustain. Jesus, Pete. <laughs> My handle on Instagram is sustainable underscore Sue, or you can come to sustainablesue.com. Yes. And I am at Janae PV. And if you want to see this and you're only hearing it, you can go to youtube.com slash at conscious contact podcast. And that handle at starting with the at is the same for our Instagram as well. So yeah, let us know your thoughts. Thanks. See you next time.